Alright, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani and we are on the way to Kumasi. And we're gonna have a nice uh, presentation and we're gonna talk about living and doing business or specifically doing business in Ghana. And our good brother Nana Yao is gonna give some insights along with our brother Duncan. So the more questions you have, the more they can go to uh, certain details. My brother Nana, can you, uh, can you just go through certain basic steps of how to start a business in Ghana? and the uh, requirements and the difference between someone who is a foreign national country and a Ghanaian, if there's a difference? Uh, well, first of all, to start business in Ghana, you need to have a local partner. You need to have a local partner to partner with. So it means that you don't register it as uh, so we have sole proprietorship a limited liability company and then we have enterprises so the plan on which one either company limited by liability or enterprise or sole proprietor now if you want to do that you need to partner with a Ghanaian a local to go do the registration but you can also register your company at the registrar general department as a foreigner, but in that case, you will pay more. You pay more, and you need a treasurer to show that this is what you're coming to do. So, the, and that is payable in foreign currency. And then you will also you can pay in CDs, but equivalent of that. Now there are two major government vehicles or government organization or agencies that strive. The first is the Ghana Investment Promotion Council or Authority. Ghana Investment Promotion Authority. That's, you can go to their office, they are on the website, and then you, they, are, they have their website. When you Google, you see Ghana Investment Promotion Authority and they have their services that they offer everything in there. Then we also have the Ghana Free Zones Authority. And in the Free Zones area, this is purely for manufacturing. So it's an enclave dedicated by the government of Ghana. So when you are operating in that enclave, uh, you need also uh, to register your company and all that. But in that enclave, you need to uh, employ a lot of Ghanaians in that enterprise and you also have to you are exempted from some taxes because the items you are going to produce must be export oriented yes must be export oriented so you first of all go to the registrar general's department and you decide whether you want to register as a sole proprietor as limited or as enterprise. So we have them in various categories. Now also, in terms of, uh, we have uh, what we call the land tenure system. If you want to go into agriculture, you want to go into agri, you need to see the appropriate land owners. The appropriate land owners might be the chief or a family. Now, when you see them, then you come to a type of agreement that I want this land for maybe five years or six years to do this, to do agriculture. Now, you might either pay them or you agree that when I produce whatever I'm going to grow, we'll divide it into three. And then, one for the maintenance of the business, one for the people, and one for yourself. That is uh, all that you need. So you first of all need to register. And then also, you must have a registered company. You must have a registered company before you can. And then also you need, so when you register, you need also your tax identification number, what we call a T number. So when you register, they'll give you that. Now. They are linking everything to the Ghana uh, card or uh, the ECOWAS card. And this 
It's also open to foreigners who are in Ghana. You can get the Ghana card as a non Ghanaian. Yeah. To, so you can go to the uh, National Identification Authority and register. That is when you have your permit, your residency permit, stay in Ghana. Then you can do that. Yes, you can freely go to the National Identification Authority and register as a non Ghanaian. Yeah. So, yes. are you ready for questions? Yes. So, one of my questions, um, which you, I wanted to get a little more clarity about, is in regards to uh, being a non uh, Ghanaian uh, registered for this the card, you say it's called Echo. What is it called again? Echo has got Ghana card. Let's Ghana, just say Ghana card. Ghana card. Yes. So, as someone who may consider that option, and can I, do I have to be in, living in this inside of Ghana um, once I get that card? Or, or when you are living in Ghana and you have, you are legally residing in Ghana. The question is. When do you get the Ghana card, or when do you apply for the Ghana card as a non uh, Ghanaian? When you are legally residing in Ghana, you are legally residing in Ghana, you have a legal abode and everything, then you can go to the National Identification Authority and register and have that card. Okay. Okay. My next question is um, what, are, what are the best ways to overcome? five major challenges as a startup female business owner? Okay, the question is, as a startup... Uh, Start, uh, what are the best ways to overcome five major challenges as a, as startup as a startup female person, business owner? Okay, well, in every business uh, in Ghana, the start, you have, you need to understand the local, Culture, you need to understand the movement of. First of all, if you want to do business in Ghana, you need to take about a month or two to study the business environment and especially where you want to invest in. If you want to go to export, to export, you have to go first of all to the Ghana Export Promotion Authority or Council. It used to be Council, is now uh, Authority. You take, you go there, you study, and then also study uh, the port system, the ship system, and everything. When you study all this, then you have clear mind that, hey, this is what I want to do. Now, as a young entrepreneur, yes, you need to register, you need to make all those legal uh, Entities, you need to read them like the Registrar General's Department because you cannot operate a business in Ghana without you registering with the Registrar General's Department, without you having a tax identification number. So you need all that. So you go to the Ghana Revenue Authority. When you register, they'll generate a tin or a pin for you. And that's what you use. And so it also depends on your capital that you are bringing in to do the business. Yes. So the capital you have is what you are going to do for the business. Yeah. And Ghana is a fertile ground in terms of labor. We have all the human resources from unskilled to skilled personnel. They are all available from ICT to everything. They are all available in Ghana because Ghana produces hundreds of graduates yearly, which not all of them get employed. So uh, Ghana always welcomes people to open their businesses, or uh, open your business because it will flourish and give opportunity to people coming out of the university, people coming out of the technical universities, coming out of uh, even the junior high school and the senior high school will get employment. 
this. So, thank you for sharing that. When it comes to someone who um, wants to look at the option, not to say I wouldn't look at the, the option of teaming up with someone who's a local uh, individual, yeah. but um, I wanted to find out um, when it comes to becoming someone who's solo, a soul or someone is doing it on one's own. How much? What is the minimum amount of money I I, sh I need to is required for me to have to do it in that capacity? Okay, with that, let me just go on the uh, Registrar General's website and see how much. If you want to register your business as a foreigner, I know some time ago it's twenty thousand CDs. But I don't know how much it is now. So let me check. Now, also as I'm checking, when you are uh, process amount to 500,000 US dollars for wholly foreign owned company. When you're on your own. Yeah, when you're on your own. Yes. But this minimum is increased to a million dollar for a trading company. Now, a million dollars for a trading company because they welcome investors, but the country also want to protect its indigenous businesses. So therefore, they discourage foreigners coming into investing in the trading area, like the market, because there are people like the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Buddha, is always fighting the government that the Chinese and other people are coming in with those goods and that is solely reserved for Ghanaians. So they make it in a way that they'll not be able to. But well when they'll not be able to. So that is the reason. So if you want a soul you need five hundred thousand to to do that. How much is it to, uh, how much, what's the minimum amount of proceeds to have to team up with someone who's building? No, yes, uh, to team up with somebody, that is going to be a discussion between you and your partner. Right. Because you're going to register it by limited share. Yeah. So you divide a share by your sum. Either you take 20%, 10%, 5%, 3%, it's welcome. Yeah, so it depends on that, and that you will send to the registrar general, and you buy your form, and you state the shares each person is having in that corporation or in the company. So the person doesn't need to have a, an initial uh, capital when teaming up with a Ghanaian who lives in this uh, in this country, right? No, you need to have a capital. So what is the minimum? That's what I want. To well, the minimum, you see, starting a business also depends on That's what right. you have. Oh, okay. Yeah, what okay. you have. So they're not imposing the No, 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 no. Oh, no, okay. it's not. You can, in your discussion, oh, okay. I will tell when you go to the restaurant department and you pay for the forms. 
into state limited by liability, enterprise or so. So depend on the other okay. thing. So you will state the shares. Yes. Okay. And uh, my last, well, my next question. Yes. So someone else is uh, welcome to ask a question um, after I've asked this one. Uh, what are the best ways to raise funding for any type of registered business enterprise? Again, what are the best ways to raise funding for any type of registered business enterprise? In Ghana, uh, GoFundMe is not here. That's right. GoFundMe, no, 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 is not in Ghana. So what you do is, you come with your money, and then you open a bank account. You open a bank account, after opening a bank account, and you do business with them for some months. Then you send your business proposal to the bank, and the bank will go through the business proposal. If they feel it's okay, and you show them your profit margins and your losses and all that, then, and they are certified, well, then they can grant you the loan, which is, but if you are a foreigner, they also want to see your resident permit. They will want to see your permit, that you are legally residing in Ghana, you have a proper place of abode, and then, you also show a collateral. And that is why it's always good to partner a local person. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't partner a local person, he might, that local person might not be, not a very rich person, not uh, all that, but by all means, he or she has some family That's right. property That's somewhere. Right. That's right. And so he can use that, or she can use that as a collateral back the loan yes so they will demand that collateral but first of all you must be a customer of that bank we also have the small loan uh, schemes or the service and loans companies now this service and loans also you must be a customer of the service and loans and they see your runners and all that before they can give you a loan. But in Ghana, go for me, no way. You can do it down also with yourself. In order also, if you're in the small sector business, where loan is difficult, we also do what we call SUSU. Oh, yeah. We have SUSU. We have it in the US. Uh -huh. yeah. So SUSU cool. is a way of also raising capital yeah. among Yes, or friends, like-minded friends, who will do that. You do the suit and then you take this man, and then I'll take the next man, and then I'll take the next man, and that's how, then you invest that into your business. So if you want to do export, import, you go to the Ghana Investment Promotion Authority, and then, now, if you are bringing in food items, you want to invest in the food and beverages sector, after you do all the registrations, you need to go to the Food and Drugs Authority and the Ghana Standard Authority to give you clearance. Every beverage or food item onto the Ghanaian market must be approved and your advertisement also must be approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. That is, when you play those hurdles, then your products can be sold in the market. If you don't do this, when you put the thing in the market, the Food and Drugs Board will put a disclaimer on it and tell the people this is not wholesome for consumption and therefore he has not sanctioned it and it must be pulled out of the shops. So you need to go to the Food and Drugs Authority for approval before you can bring all those things into the market. Yes. Thank you for answering the questions.
what area of business you want to do. After that, you then go uh, all the hospitality or hotels in Ghana. You need to go and register or get a license from Ghana Tourism Authority. Now, Ghana Tourism Authority gives a yearly license because after a year, They'll come and evaluate your premises to see that the basic things that make the visitor comfortable is there. And if it's not, they'll ask you to close down and do what you had to do before. Likewise, the restaurants and all that, you need to have a license from the Ghana Tourism Authority for you to operate. But the recently the Airbnbs are not being checked, so they are roping them in. Now that you need to register with the Ghana Tourism Authority because they, the Act of Parliament are giving them that authority to make sure that all sites and hospitality uh, industries fall are, are up to standard. With and therefore, when you go to any of these hotels and the standard is not, you can report to the Ghana Tourism Authority and they can take it up. Yes. So first of all, you need to register. After registering, and you want to turn it into a guest house or one star hotel, a budget hotel, or whatever, you need to go to the Ghana Tourism Authority to get it registered. And license. Yeah. So to operate school, same thing? Yes. To operate school, you need to also register with the registrar general. After after putting out the school, you need to go to the Ghana Education Service. Now the Ghana Education Service is the agency of the Ministry of Education, or what you call Department of Education, they do the day-to-day -day running of the schools. So you go to the Ghana Education Service, and then you register and approve. They will approve your school for operation. And after the approval, if you are running a tertiary, after that approval, you are running a tertiary, all the courses, all the programs you are going to run, you need to send all those programs to the National Accreditation Board. The National Accreditation Board will credit your courses. So if they don't, those students cannot be graduated. So they have to approve all those programs of your school if you are running a tertiary. Likewise, when you are running the kindergarten and the primary or the elementary, you need to send or uh, get all those approvals from the Ghana Education Service. In the health sector, likewise, if you want to invest in the health sector, like you want to put up a pharmacy, you need to register with the pharmacy council. And then the pharmacy council will give you that approval and authority to go and do or uh, open your pharmacy uh, or hospital or all that you need to go to the Ghana Health Facilities. We have the Health Facilities Authority so they will check all those who are and approve. Then we also have the Ghana Health Service who oversee the day-to-day -day, uh, running administration of health uh, care in Ghana. So you need to also 
approach the Ghana Health Service for all those things to be done. And then the Ghana Health Facilities is also another agency that oversees to the facilities at the hospitals. Then you also need a qualified, licensed medical officers registered if necessary. They must be registered with the Ghana Midwives and Nurses Association. They might be licensed. They, have, they must have their register before. Or if it's a dental, they must be with the Dental Council. They might be with the Ghana Medical Association. So if you don't have all those people there, you, when the authorities come, you, you might be operating with or license of what we call uh, quack doctors. Ah, that's right. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So they will do that. The next one, yes, if you want to go into, let's say, petroleum, yeah, likewise you need to register and then go with the National Petroleum Authority. You need to register that and then they will also uh, see to it that you conform and with the Ghana uh, Standard Authority, they also will see to it that. So there are several opportunities of investment in Ghana. It's open and you can invest in all aspects, everywhere you want to. And not only in Accra, in, not only in Kumasi, not only in Secondary Takrade, but you can now. There are incentives also when you want to open factories outside or in the rural areas. There are several incentives that the government has put out there that when you go in, you will benefit from. Yeah. Yes, your when, when bringing in um, feminine uh, pads or feminine hygiene type of products, for example, uh, feminine um, pads used for menstruation, I understand. Uh, Um, like I said before, uh, you need to register your company and then you are importer. If you are importer, you have to register with the Ghana Importers Association. You have to be with the Ghana Importers Association or you join GUTA. Now you join GUTA, Ghana Union Traders Association. Now, with that, uh, sanitary and all that fall under the health, the Ghana Health Service. Uh, so we have Port Health authorities, uh, uh, Port Health officials who are stationed at every point of entry. So when you import those things, just like any poultry product you import into the country, the Port Health officials will certify it before you take it out. So the Food and drug board will come in. So, likewise, sanitary pad and those things, those health authorities will come in and approve it and make sure it falls within the standard. Okay, so I'm writing down the name. You said it's Ghana. What is there, the first one, the Ghana Port Authority? No, Ghana. No. Import. Oh, import. Ex Ghana. Ghana. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Ghana Importers, Ooh. Importers Association, it's, a, it's an association, it's an association of importers. So Ghana Importers Association, yes. and then you mentioned Ghana Gauta. Gauta, but those people Guta. will not be happy with you if you want to venture into in, uh, the market of trading, but unless you want to partner, right. <laughs> sell them, then they'll be happy with you because okay. it means that People are doing importation of this thing. So you need to partner some of them and then you can penetrate into the market. What is high price? Ghana Union Traders Association. Ghana Union Traders Association. Association. And then 
then the last one was the uh, Port Health Asso uh, Authorities. Ghana import, uh, import us, uh, but no, yeah. when you, the, the Port Health. Port Health. Port okay. Health. They, okay. uh, they are stationed from the Ghana Health Service. They have their officials. Okay. The Ghana Health Service has their officials at every entry point right. of the country. Questions? Thank you. restricted to one year renewable so they'll give you one year residency and then you, re you keep renewing every year yeah. until you decide to yes so and then also if you set up all those companies you must employ your workforce for 90 percent should be now, if you are bringing, you must prove to the authorities that you are importing that human resource because you are, you are finding it difficult to get one in the country. So those are the things. And then if you are bringing all those people in, then you have a lot of money to pay because they will charge you for all the services and all that. Yes. So. Thank you. If you have, if you don't have any more questions, thank you very much. And yes. I was gonna say yeah. And, and about, how about the people that's not, you know, doing the business or anything, and they just want to come and like stay, you know, set up their house or their storefront or whatever, and just stay and enjoy life. Yeah, so they want to come and relax. Yeah, they retired. And stay. People that retired. Yes. Everything. They may have a storefront yeah. and they like, rent a few apartments in their house. Yeah. Uh, yes, all those people are welcome to Ghana. If you just want to repatriate and stay in Ghana, all that you need to do is either buy your house mm -hmm. or build your house right. or buy your land right. and build your house uh -huh. and you are free to go. Okay. Yes, you have your legal stuff. That's all. And the residency just... And the residency that. just... And you are good to go. And nobody, if you don't disturb anybody, right. nobody will disturb you. Oh, that's right. You can drive around that's Ghana right. at any time, any point. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And thank you. if no more questions, thank you very much for paying attention to me. And if any further questions crop up in your mind, just alert me and I'll try. If I don't have the answers, I'll go to the website of the agencies and get to the answer. Thank you very much. Thank you.